Today let's look at exponential functions. An exponential function means that the variable is in the exponent. So let's look at this one, 2 raised to the x power. You might see it written in function notation or just y equals 2 to the x power. To graph it, let's make a table of values. Let's start with 0 here, 2 to the 0 power. Remember anything raised to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, and 2 to the fourth power is 16. Now let's graph these points on the graph to see what shape the graph starts to make. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8, and 4, 16. At this point I'm off of my graph. These points are not in a straight line, they're curving. So let's see what happens when we use some negative numbers for x. 2 raised to the negative first power is 1 half, to the negative second is 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 sixteenth. Now let's graph these. Negative 1, 1 half, negative 2, so a fourth, and then an eighth, and then a sixteenth. And you can see these are going to get lower and lower, but they will never touch zero. They just approach zero. If we connect these, we'll get the line of an exponential function. These will continue going in both directions, and it won't make a straight line. It'll keep getting lower and lower over here, and it'll keep getting higher and higher on this side. An exponential function typically starts out growing slowly, and then picks up speed and grows very quickly. Let's think about what this could represent. This is 2 multiplying over and over and over. So if this were representing a real world, world situation, it would be something that's doubling. Maybe it's doubling every day, but it's increasing very quickly, and as time goes on, that increase will be greater and greater. Here's the standard form for exponential function. Let's look at what these different variables will represent. A is your initial value. There will be a number there. B will describe how that value is changing. You'll have a number here as well. And then X is your variable. It usually represents time. So let's write an example. What if you invest an amount of money? Let's say you want to start out by investing $100. And you've been told that this investment will increase 20% every year. Well, we'd want to multiply that to show an increase of 20%. So we'd multiply it by one point 20 or 1.2 and it's every year so it has an exponent of x. Let's see how this exponential function would work. Now first of all why do we have a 1 instead of just 20 percent? We need that 1 there so that you don't lose money. If we just multiply 100 by 20 percent or 0.2 it would show that you only have 20 dollars. We put the 1 here so we'll get a value of $120. That would represent what you still have, the 100, plus the increase every year. So let's make a table to see how this money would grow. Starting out, if we plug a 0 in here, this would just become 1, which would show our starting value of 100. The first year, we would multiply by 1.2 to show a new value of 120. The second year, we'd have 1.2 raised to the second power, then multiplied by 100. hundred and forty-four. Notice it doesn't just increase by twenty dollars every year because your investment is growing, you're going to gain that interest on what you've gotten the previous year. We can continue doing this to fill out this table. Here we can see how the money would grow and on the fourth year you would have 
already doubled your money. This is an example of compounding interest that is compounded each year. This is also an example of exponential growth. Anytime it is growth, this number will be greater than one. Now let's look at how we can show exponential decay or when an amount is decreasing. Let's say we have a deer population that starts out at 1,000 and it's decreasing by 5% every year. Here's our initial value of 1,000. Now we need to put a number here that would multiply to show a decrease of 5%. That would be 0.95. It's 5% taken away from the whole, so it's 95%. And it's raised to an exponent because that will give us 5% decrease each year. When we plug in zero, this whole value becomes one, so we have our starting population of 1,000. Then we can plug in different numbers for the variable to get the population after different years. All right here we can see how the population would change after one, two, and three years. Now like many mathematical models, it's not perfect because we have these decimals here. So if we were asked for a specific year, we would need to round this to a whole number since we're talking about deer. The important thing to know about exponential functions is to know what these values mean. Can you set up an exponential function when you're given an initial value or a starting value, a percent increase or decrease, and then you just have your variable to represent your time? On a graphing calculator, I can go to y equals, and I can enter this equation, 1,000 times 0.95 raised to the x power, and then I want to be sure my window is set where I'll be able to see what's going on here. So I've changed it from 0 to 10 and from 0 to 1100. And then I hit graph. And this line is slightly curving and it'll keep decreasing if I were to expand this window. If I want to find an exact value, let's say we wanted to know the deer population in 8 years, we can go to second, calculate, Number one is value, so we hit enter. And then we can plug in x equals eight. And it'll give us the exact value of deer in eight years.